Yo, man, it's King X. I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Girl Bastards. I'm scared of me. Oh, yeah. I'm scared of me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mask and gloves before Corona. <clears throat> All right, so we got King X jumping off the porch with us today. Yeah, man, it's a blessing. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you coming by. How you feeling today, man? I feel blessed, man. Yeah. Blessed. Nah, that's feel great. Up, man. Yeah. yeah. So what else you working on here in Atlanta during this trip, man? We just did a little promo run. We did some shit with iHeart Radio. Okay. We did some, uh, supposed to be in Onyx and stuff, you know what I'm saying? We're supposed to be mm. rolling out a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. So you out here working now. Yeah, we out here working, man. Nah, that's what's good, man. So how you feeling about this new year, man? 2022, man. I'm feeling good. It looked bright. Yeah. And how did your 2021 go then? How would 2021 you 2021 was a, it was a working year. It was a lot of lessons learned, a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? So. I dig that, man. <laughs> All right, so you originally from Beaumont, Texas, right? Beaumont, Texas. Okay. I was born there. I was raised on the north end of Beaumont, Texas. My mama, she moved me to uh, to Baytown. They call it the east side. It's mm -hmm. called Baytown, you feel me? So I, I don't think I had anyone from, I definitely not Baytown. No, but for sure. I don't think even from Beaumont, maybe one person, man, that might be slipping my mind. So for sure. what was it like growing up there? Like what's there to do out there? Is it big cities? Is it yeah, small it's, country it, it, town? It's the country, yeah, man. It's the country. We ain't had really much to do. A lot of people rode horses, a lot of people barefoot outside, you know, country oh, wow. stuff, you feel me? Getting into trouble, doing all type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when would you say you jumped off the porch, how old were you? Young age. I was outside. <laughs> I used to get in trouble a lot because I, I wasn't in by the street lights. Oh, really? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Just exploring, just being a, a kid, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah, I'm going to Sam Houston State, right? Sam Houston State, man. Bearcats. Okay. I was out there in Huntsville for a while. So what was that experience like going up there? I had originally went to El Paso oh, to, really? to play football. You know what I'm saying? I was playing football. When I had moved to Baytown, I really focused on football. And I thought that was going to be my ticket. You know what I'm saying? I was real good. You feel me? I was in the paper every week. I had a full ride to A&M. Oh, shit. But I got injured my last, the last game of the senior year before playoffs. Oh, I had tore my ACL and Damn. my meniscus. So I ended up going to El Paso for my freshman year. And uh, then out there, that's when I realized I didn't want to play football no more. Hmm. So I stopped playing football and I went to Sam Houston. I was going to try to finish, finish something, you know what I'm saying? For my mama's sake, because she an educator, you feel me? She was pregnant with me when she was getting her master's degree, you feel me? Okay. So like, she was real big on education. So I was going to finish for her. So I went to like my junior year and I realized that, you know what I'm saying? I was getting in trouble and stuff, catching cases out there in Walker County. So I was just like, let me just pursue what I want to do. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I did. What were you studying out there? What was your major? Business administration. Okay. Business administration. Yeah. So what's been one of the biggest life lessons you had to learn in your life so far? I say one of the biggest life lessons I ever learned so far. So many though, I can't just pull out one. But if I had to say the biggest one, probably just don't give up. Like whatever you want to do, just stay consistent. Yeah. Don't ever quit. I feel that. And what's been one of the biggest obstacles you had to overcome in your life so far? One of the biggest obstacles I had to overcome was realizing everybody ain't for you. You know what I'm saying? Be a lot of people around that, you know what I'm saying? You think that's really you and they for you and shit, but they don't really be for you. That was one of the biggest heartbreaks life taught me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll hit you like a, a bag of bricks, man, that's for sure. A bag of bricks. Yeah. So how'd you get into making music? How old were you at first? When I first started making music, I was out there in El Paso. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, me and some other people, it was a whole bunch of us. Like, El Paso is really like where all the, the cold people end up. They're like, they knuckleheads or something happened, they got injured, they're on injury reserve and all this, they end up in El Paso. So I met a lot of dudes from a lot of places, talented guys, you feel me? Uh, and a lot of them, we used to always just sit around, chop it up. We talk about life, talk about religion, God, all that. And we just really, you know what I'm saying, got into, got into making music. We used to all get together and make music and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So that's really where I, but I've been 
music. I love music my whole life, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've always been big on music. Listen to it all the time. Everywhere I went, I had headphones in. You know what I'm okay. saying? But out there is when I really started, like 18, 19. So who were some of your favorite artists you were listening to, either growing up or back then when you had first started? I listened to a lot of different artists, like from all over the, the region, you know what I'm saying, like all over America, you feel me? I listened to a lot of East Coast stuff, I listened to a lot of South, Down South stuff, some West Coast stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a bunch of artists, but like, just off the top of my head, like I used to listen to stuff like, like Brand Nubian and, and, my, and like, you know what I'm saying? Just really just a whole bunch of it's really too many to name, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. I listened to a lot of currency coming up. Okay. He was one of my favorite artists. Still is to this day. Yeah, he's still killing it, still man. Still killing it. Yeah. And you probably the first one to ever mentioned brand newbie in on the porch too, man. Yeah, for sure. Probably. For sure. It's really more than that, for real. Like I used to do the brand newbie, KRS one, Eric and Rakim. I used to like a lot of that East Coast stuff for sure coming up. Like a lot of people thought I was weird, you know what I'm saying? Because I used to read a lot of books and listen to stuff that really talked about something, you know what I'm saying? I used to listen to like South stuff too, South Legends, you feel me? Like I grew up listening to Zero naturally. Oh, yeah. Because, you know what I'm saying? That's where I'm at, so it's around me. So, like, that shit, you know what I'm saying? Scarface, you know what I'm saying? Outcast, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a whole bunch. It was really artists that I gravitated to that was just outside the box, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and some artists that were really talking some shit too, man. That's for sure. So when you first started rapping, did it come natural to you? Was it easy or? I felt like I was a natural, and a lot of people around me told me they was, they was fucking with it, but I kind of felt like it wasn't that good, you know what I'm saying? I feel like they was telling me that because they was my partners. But I feel like, nah, I didn't, I didn't reach a new level. I've been doing this shit 10 years now, so I'm kind of like finding my sound, finding how I want to come. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I'm getting a better response to it now. I feel like it's genuine responses now. You know what I'm For saying? For sure. Compared to back then. Okay. And so was your family and close friends, were they surprised when you were sending them music? Like, hey, I'm rapping now. Check this out. I ain't gonna lie. They wasn't surprised because we had family members that was already making music and stuff. For sure. Yeah. They, he kind of like one of my older cousins, his name, uh, his name Doe. Uh, call him Doe Beezy, you feel me? Uh, he, uh, he really influenced me to start rapping for real. He from Dallas, you know what I'm saying? He's still okay. doing his thing too, by the way. Yeah, okay. So when did you start to take it serious? Was it when you left college or were you already taking it serious before then or? Probably like, probably like two years before I dropped out of college. Hmm. Cause I started getting in trouble with the law and I was kind of like seeing like older people that I was around. I was around a whole bunch of different characters, you feel me? A whole bunch of different type of people. I always hung out with people that was older than me. So I kind of like used to learn life lessons through them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I see what they was happy with, what they was unhappy with. And I try not to make them same mistakes. Like that's the reason why I'm 28 and I ain't got no kids right now. Hmm. My brother was 15 when I was born. He had like four kids. Oh shit. And like, you know what I'm saying? That kind of like, you know, just make you, just make you be more careful and analyze stuff before you just jump into it. You know what I'm saying? So. Kind of like that. Yeah. So what's the meaning between behind the three eyes in the name King? Three eye, man. I came up with that probably like in 2012, 2013. Kept saying three eye all the time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it was kind of like a double entendre between the pineal gland, your third eye, and the three eyes. They stood for principles that I believed and I stood on. Integrity, intellect, and insight. You know what I'm saying? Cause I feel like, I feel like with them principles right there, if you do anything in life and you adapt them, pre them principles, you're gonna be successful regardless. Yeah. Especially if your heart and your mind align, it's gotta happen. Now that's real shit right there. So like, what's the message that you put into your music, man, or? I ain't gonna lie, I don't really just be pushing no message, but I just be, It'd be like a, I'm a real reflective person. I sit back and I analyze stuff. And I, I reflect on things that I deal with, things that I be going through. And that's what I put into the music. It just be like a journal for me type shit. It's like a release, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It basically be whatever I'm going on, going on at that time, what's in my mind, you feel me? 
Sometimes it be greater meanings behind it. Sometimes it just be some ignorant shit. You know what I'm saying? It just be it just be me. It's like the dynamics of being a human being. You feel me? Yeah. We all got different shit that we go through, different sides of us that we express. So I don't just it don't just be one thing. It be everything I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so music like it's like your therapy for you then. Exactly. Yeah. I got a song called Cathartic Therapy. You know what I'm saying? And I talk about that shit. It's just therapy for me, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I fuck with that song too. What were you going through that day when you recorded that one? I was just, I just wanted to just get in there and just, I really just be talking, man. I just be saying what I believe, what I'm standing on, you feel me? It just be, I don't know. I always been passionate about music, man. And now that I'm doing it, it's just, I just let it come out of me. You know what I'm saying? It be my soul doing this shit. I don't even be doing it. My soul just come out, you feel me? I love this shit though, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. So what's your creative process? Do you write or are you just freestyle and punch in? Man? Sometimes I freestyle punch in, sometimes I write. It just depends on how it comes to me, what the situation calls for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, you could be locked in the studio with somebody and I'll just get on some shit and shit just come out. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you get down to sit down and reflect, go through your process. Like I always like to write, I always like being a writer, you feel me? Like, I was always good at English, you know what I'm saying? I was bad at math and shit like that, but English and history and social studies and shit like that, I was good at shit like that, you feel me? Yeah. Like, I had, I've had professors in, in, in college try to publish my papers and shit. Oh shit, For that's sure. dope. Yeah. And you live in Houston now, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Houston now. So how long you been out there and what brought you to Houston? I've probably been in Houston for like, Really, what brought me to Houston was just being being in Baytown. It's right next to Houston, so mm -hmm. everybody mixing in. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Dealing with like street shit and shit like that, just trying to make some money, moving around. You don't naturally just go everywhere. You know what yeah. So like, eventually, I realized I need to be in Houston. Houston, where it's at. You feel me? So I moved into the heart of Houston, so I can just be in the middle, get everywhere, rub shoulders with people. You know what I'm saying? Just you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's really what brought me to Houston, for sure. What's the music scene out there uh, right now? It's a lot of talent. It's a lot of talent scene. in Houston, for sure. It's a whole bunch of talent in Houston, for sure. Yeah. Shout out everybody in Houston doing their thing, man. And then around the surrounding cities, too. Yeah. There's a lot of them, too. Do you feel like most of the artists out there support each other? Or is it more of a competition? Is it kind of 50-50? I feel like naturally it's going to be competitive, but I feel like a lot of people come together, for sure. A lot of people come together and make things happen. A lot of people understand how to put that mastermind effect into into use for sure yeah and how does coming out here to atlanta work uh to work compared gotta to come back to at atlanta home? gotta come to atlanta it's a hub you know what i'm saying definitely this is where a lot of entertainment gets put on center stage i feel like it's like a talent show for the nation atlanta you feel me Absolutely. And being in naturally you gotta holler at, you know what i'm saying dirty glove you gotta for come sure, hop man. off the porch <laughs> definitely man so What's been one of the biggest sacrifices you had to make in your life, you know, to be able to pursue this career and be successful too? I feel like one of the biggest sacrifices in being obsessed with something and trying to make something come is like sacrificing human emotion and human contact, you feel me? Like relationships and shit like that suffer, you know what I'm saying? Relationships with your family, the people around you, you know what I'm saying? Intimate relationships. Like a lot of that shit get pushed off to the wayside because you're pursuing something greater than, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So that's probably one of the biggest sacrifices. But at the same time, I'm cool with that. Yeah. So. If they're meant to be in your life, they're going to stick sure. around for it. If it's meant to be, it's going to be, for sure. Absolutely, man. All right, so what can you tell us about your most recent project, man? Project X, Volume 2. Project X, Volume 2, man, it was just a, a compilation of a whole bunch of songs that I had in the vault that I had together. I just had to get it to the people because I just had to like because I had to let them know that's what was going on at that time now like I, I'm in a new headspace I'm in a new vibe you know what I'm saying I feel different I don't feel the same as I do as the old songs I'm on because I'm life not the same as it was then you feel yeah. me? life be different it changed and it is dynamic you know what I'm saying so I feel like that's why I got to be dynamic with the music because naturally you're going through different shit you can't rap about the same shit I'm mm -hmm. not going through that shit no more I'm going through this right now so that's why I gotta talk about. So like when I had that shit together, I just let it go. And you know, I got a good response to it. The people loved it, you feel me? Like, it's cool, it's cool. Yeah. I just, just go with the flow, man. I feel that.
like water, like Bruce Lee said. <laughs> yeah, kind of just speak on your growth as an artist from when you first started up until this most recent project then. When I started out, I was on some like, I feel like I was trying to save, I was trying to save myself, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of like I had a lot inside of me and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Things I wasn't proud of in the past and shit like that. And I kind of wanted to like, purge myself of this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of felt like, like if you're going to like church and you're talking to God, like you just did some shit, some foul shit, you know what I'm saying? And you like, God, forgive me for this, you know what I'm saying? I kind of like was like, trying to, redemp redemption for myself type shit, you know what I'm saying? That's what I was on. But I got past that phase, I got a lot of bad karma up off me, and I feel like now I just be expressing what my lifestyle, what I go through, you know what I'm saying? Shit that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. It just be, it just be life, man. It's just life. I feel that, man. For sure. All right, so you just dropped a couple singles, too. Uh, let's talk about this uh, Scared of Me, man. What was your inspiration going into that song? Yeah, man, Scared of Me, man. I was just like thinking about how I'm my own biggest enemy, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you doing something, anything in life, like, the only person that's really stopping you is you. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's where the inspiration behind that came from. And the fact that it was kind of like a double entendre as that, and like, how people be trying to play with me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't one of these, you know what I'm talking about? And a lot of people try to play with you like you are because you're a humble dude, you're cool, and you be chilling. But you just, you know what I'm saying? I'm scared of me. I, 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 avoid, I avoid certain things for the sake of the person that I'm dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Not per se me, because I don't give a fuck. I really take it to, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got you. Yeah, what about Hell Yeah? Hell Yeah, I was just feeling good that day. I was just talking some shit. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Riding around, serving gas bags, yeah, hell yeah. Play with me and get your toe tag. Yeah, hell yeah. Nah, for real. That's all. I was just feeling good. I was feeling myself that day. Got in that booth and was just vibing out with my brothers. So, do you know what your next single or your next video is going to be? Do you got something tucked away already? Or? For sure. We got some visuals coming for Scared of Me and Hell Yeah. Okay. And we got new singles that's going to drop too, for sure. There's a lot more music on the way, for sure. Yeah. So have you started working on the next project or are you kind of just focusing on just stacking and Yeah, I'm just, right now, I'm just working. I'm just creating, getting in that zone, getting in that mode, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all that's going on. A whole bunch of work. Any features you've been working with? Any other artists? Nah, I ain't like no features in yet, hmm. but I'm open to it for sure. Okay. And what about producer-wise, who you been working with? I've been working with Finesse. I've been working with a bunch of producers, you feel me? But it's just, I've been fuck, fucking with Sugar Beats. He go by Monopoly too. I've been fucking with a lot of producers. We just locking some, we locking some stuff in. We locking shit in there. We just working, bro. Yeah. All I can say is stay tuned, you feel me? Like, there's more on the way. And you got your own label? For sure. Yeah. Was it Three Eye Entertainment? Three Eye Entertainment, man. Okay. So, it's like I just talk about some of the challenges that come with being an independent artist these days in this industry, man. Not having access to the same resources as the artists that got that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you plan to put other artists on the label or are you kind of, yeah. So, sure. so sure. it's a lot of prospects right now. They know who they are. <laughs> okay. Uh, you got any advice for the youth uh, you like to share? Yeah, man, stay out of trouble, man. That shit look good right now, but that shit ain't really what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't let outside influences influence you. Stay true to yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you fit, trust your intuition. You know what I'm talking about? And be open to adapt. You know what I'm saying? Don't get stuck in your ways. If you coming up and you're in a rough environment, keep your head up, bro. I know you gotta do what you gotta do. 
But just always focus on something better, bro. Don't get locked in that shit. That shit will hold you back. That shit held me back for many years. That's solid right there. All right, Dax, what's some of your goals for 2022? Like, what are you trying to accomplish these next 12 months, man? Honestly, bro, in 2022, I just want some money. For sure. Some real cake. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Some real paper. All right, you got any last words for your fans? Any shout-outs you'd like to give before we wrap it up here? Man, shout-out to the 3 out Tribe. Shout-out to CEO Supervision for making all this shit possible. Shout-out to all the homies out there that's grinding. I see y'all. Keep y'all head up, man. I got it. Shout-out to God, you feel me? Shout-out to my mama. Just me and her, for sure. Shout out to all my brothers. Y'all know who they are. So, right, cool. shout out to Daddy Glove Bass. What's up? I'm scared of me. I'm, yeah. I'm scared of me. Yeah. Yeah. Masking gloves before coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah.